Well, blessings, friends. Do you feel blessed this morning? I got to tell you, I am blessed, friends, and I trust that you are as well. In your spirit, I'm not talking about your physical life. I'm talking about in your spirit. Are you connected with God? Are you on a one-on-one communication? Is there anything blocking that path? Do you hear from him? Can you sense his spirit at the very mention of his name? Oh, hallelujah, friends. I hope that you can. Well, welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness truly is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ, our Savior, is King of all kings, Lord of all lords. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Does your heart sing with praise this morning, friends? Now, yesterday, our teaching came out of 1 John. And I read the book of 1 John yesterday. And I got to tell you, that's one of my favorite books. It is so simple, yet it is so profound. It is so deep, and yet a child can understand it. Theologians can spend years grappling with it. And yet the newborn Christian can be fed and nourished by it. Oh, friends, what an amazing book. So what I want to do is I want to spend the next few mornings in the book of 1 John. And I want to start at John chapter 1, verse 1. And I just want to do a brief survey. And like I say, very basic, very brief, just across the surface of the book. And I want us just to see what God is telling us. Now, before we even jump into the book, There's two passages that we must read from the onset. First is in chapter 1 and verse 4. These things we write unto you that your joy may be full. That's the purpose of this book, to increase your joy. And so if you're going through some difficult times, 1 John is always a great book to go to and read. But now look at chapter 5 and verse 13, which says, These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, and that you may know that you have eternal life. Well, that's going to increase your joy that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that you're going to be eternally forever living in the presence and under the authority and rule of King Jesus. That should bring great joy to your heart. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So that's the purpose of this book, is that we would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that because of that belief, our joy would be made full. Not happiness, but real joy, friends. Joy that isn't determined by the things of this world, the course of this world, the possessions of this world, the riches of this world, but joy that is found in Christ, Messiah, the promised one, and him alone. Well, all that being said, let's just jump right in and let's look at John chapter one, verse one, that which was from the beginning. Now, immediately, John is going to tell you about Jesus and John knows about Jesus because he walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He slept beside Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He saw the miracles that he performed. He saw the compassion that was shown to the leper, to the prostitute, the harlot, the drunkard. And he saw the finger that was pointed at the Pharisee, at the Sadducee, at the religious rulers of the day. He saw how defiant Jesus Christ was to the religion of this world, and yet how he personified a relationship with the Almighty, which is exactly what the world needs. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we've seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Who is he talking about? The Lord Jesus. That which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you. Why? So that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. And to go back a few sentences, the reason that our joy would be full is because we now have fellowship with the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. We can talk with Jesus the same way John talked with Jesus. Now this then is the message in verse 5, which we have heard of him. This is what he told us. This is what we heard him teach. This is what we heard him preach. 
And now we declare it unto you. Why? Because he's not here to declare it any longer. So we become his mouthpieces. We become his voice in this dark world. God is light. Now watch this, friends. This is wonderful. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Not you and I fellowship one with another, but us and the Father have fellowship one with another. That's what it says. If we walk in the light as God himself is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. Well, who's it talking about? You and God, me and God, us and God. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now we are made worthy to go into the most holy of holies, to bow our knee before him and make all our requests known unto him. Isn't that what we're told in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Well, the throne of God is in the Holy of Holies, and the priest, the high priest, was only allowed to go in there once a year. But we have acceptance into there many times throughout the day, as often as we need him. But I want to wrap up our teaching this morning, focus upon the passage in 5 and 6. It says, God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say that we have fellowship with him, that we are a follower, that we believe then we better not be walking in darkness. Because if we're walking in darkness, then we are lying. We do not have fellowship with him. We do not know him. We may have an intellectual understanding of God, a concept of God, but we don't truly know him. We don't know him in intimate ways. And therefore, we do not the truth. So it would be important at this point to ask one single question. What is darkness? And an easy answer to that would be, it's the opposite of the light. So when you think of Jesus Christ and all that he is, light person, I mean, the book of Revelation tells us that he was he's so bright that he outshines the sun. That's bright, friends. You can't look upon the sun. You certainly can't look upon the sun, S-O-N, right? I mean, if you can't look upon the S-U-N, you can't look upon the S-O-N. And so just think about everything that is opposite of Christ. Everything that is opposite of the Father. Everything that is opposite of the kingdom. And begin to think about them. Just, just name them one by one. Just go right down the list. Everything that you can think of. Amusement parks, television, guitars, drums, and on and on and on. Just anything that your little old tiny mind can think of and then ask yourself the simple question, is it light or is it darkness? Now you may say, for example, like we mentioned a couple of musical instruments, they can be used for God's glory and they can be used for Satan's glory. And this is true. And so whether it's of light of darkness depends upon how it is used. I'll give you that. That is true as well. But there's some things that it doesn't matter how we use them, they're still of darkness. And so when we are warned here that we should not be walking in darkness... If we claim to have fellowship with the Almighty, we need to indeed determine what darkness is. And so, friends, I want you to contemplate that today. I want you to ask yourself that question. And I don't want you to leave any stone unturned. I want you to investigate all things and ask yourself the simple question, is this of darkness or is this of light? And as you begin to expose the darkness in your life, things that may be hidden, locked away in a corner, you don't even know this that's there, but all of a sudden becomes revealed to you, eliminate those things from your life. Get rid of them and watch your joy beginning to stir and to bubble and to take form. And friends, the more you get rid of, the greater your joy, the deeper and richer your fellowship, the more encouraged you are to go into the Holy of Holies, and communicate with your God and your Father. Friends, I'll leave you there this morning. As always, I love you. I lift you up to the Father each day. I pray that you'll do the same with us. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next video.